Greetings, everybody. Our next order of business on exploring distant worlds is to finish off their Devala Hive. They did ask for peace a while back, and I said, nope, not interested. They've got a few ships milling about, but just the one planet here in Umwat. And our troops are on approach. We don't have our general with this time. We don't have our full army, but we should have more than enough to handle this situation. See most of the resistance from population. And we have a good amount, armored breakthrough and all of that. Queen Restock actually escaped the battle on Ridri. But that was only a temporary reprieve, as they have nowhere else to go after this. Looks like the last little bits are being wiped out. See the Gazurian militia there? And kaboom. That is all she wrote. Queen Restock has been killed. The Duvala Hive has been defeated. We have taken over the moon Nefor. So let's take a look at the broader picture now that that is in place. Now we're going to want to shift our agents around. And you have no mission because there is no empire for you to have deep cover on. We are going to switch it around to where is the Utrantu at? Utrantu Collective. I want you to go into deep cover and we'll give you the full year once again. You have a little better chance of doing that now. As you can see, we did actually come up with another agent, Yudar Fushti. We have a Shandar agent who doesn't appear to be any good at counterintelligence. So we'll see how all of that works out for us. In the comparison here, we are now up at 65%. So we started this war about 45, 47% right in that range. We aren't winning yet, but we're definitely entering the end game now. And it's only a matter of time. I think we'll need one more war to really finish off victory. But when your next closest is 34, you're looking pretty good. Our score is up over half a million, and you can see nobody else is up to 100,000. Population, about 2 to 1 over the Kadame and much more over everyone else. Territory, we've definitely decisively taken the lead with all the Durval systems that we took over. Economy-wise... We're not threatening the Ancient Guardians, but we're crushing everyone else. Number one is strategic value. Military strength, again, way over everyone except for the Guardians. And the top colonies, we've actually captured a couple. Ridri and Gazuria are now within this list. The other ones we're developing are not even up to 5 billion yet, so we don't have them in this list. But they will eventually get there if the game lasts long enough. Now, going forward... Here's how the whole galaxy looks, and we have an opportunity down in this area quite a bit. There really isn't much over here that's of interest. I don't think there's a huge amount over here. But in this area, there are a lot of planets that we can investigate. And one is particularly interesting. This is where a lot of our ships have been fighting out for a long time, in the system of Algara. And in here, the pirates are up to no good. They have a pirate base, and they have a pirate fortress, and they're building... The criminal network. And if we allow them to finish that, I'm going to try to get there and take this over before they're able to. But that's the pirate wonder that allows them to basically control a planet just as if they were a standard empire. And once that's in place, we can't get rid of it. So we definitely want to try to knock that out. There are places over here we could land. The Gazurians could potentially colonize a volcanic moon there in Delanixa, and we could move out more this way, knock out these pirates. There's some more planets over here that we could try to occupy. So we have lots of alternatives in expanding in this direction, which is going to be our next goal. And we're going to be spamming out the colony ships a fair amount. If we look at our freighters, even though we've expanded quite a bit, it just feels like they have caught up. Because there is still a pretty good amount here we can see that are not doing anything. And it'll take some time to distribute resources, of course, but I think we've reached a point of critical mass where we can really just stretch out through the galaxy and cause a lot of problems. So, peaceful expansion and recovery from our war weariness, which is rampant. I think it's up at about minus 8 now, if I don't mistake. And of course, it doesn't go away immediately. Yeah, minus 8. It doesn't go away immediately. 
it'll take some time to roll down and we'll want to adjust our taxes gradually as all that occurs. On the ship design front, we have begun doing some retrofitting, but there's a lot more that we're going to need to do. We basically redesigned everything. Some of them just got basic expansions of better cargo bays and whatnot. Our military here, we've got the patrol frigate, which the last one had 150 to 160 firepower. This one has 276. Now they're up to the 650 limit on size. So we've got point defense cannons, keeping the tractor beam, ion cannons, etc. And then we've got concussion missiles, Maxos blasters, and then a few Epsilon torpedoes, as I mentioned. So once we get retrofitted here, we're going to take another big jump in our military power. The command ship has added on the inhibitor, the hyperspace deny right there with a range of a thousand. And I built some more command ships, going to be distributing them all over the place. So every system has one, every fleet has one, etc. So all of that is working well. I'm even going to just retrofit my marine frigates into the standard combat frigates. I don't think I have any need for them anymore. The carriers, well, they have almost twice as much of the fighter base as they did before. So, again, just our overall firepower going through the roof at this point. All is going mostly according to plan. The ships of the Libya exports are trying to fight us in Algara, but we're going to blow them up as we're about to land on the planet. Our strike craft will make very short work of them indeed. No one can stand against our firepower, of course, at this stage. I think we've landed. We have. Oh, yay, we have a Gazurian ship captain. But this is the criminal network, which will no longer continue building once we have won this battle. There it goes. And then we can clear out all of the pirates there. And there's very little, frankly, that there is even really important for me to do as we are getting closer and closer to the conclusion of this. I'm building. I don't want to build. I want to attack. I do want to build a regional capital, just not here. So those are for reducing corruption, of course. And we haven't built one yet since the war was going on. But over in the former Dervala Gazurian area is probably the best place. Ridri has 41% corruption scales with the population, also how far it is from our main capital. Gazuria, 29%. Nefor, 26%. I think Ridri is going to be the best location it's right in the middle of all that, and it has the highest corruption. So we will go ahead and build one of these there. And we are finishing up the Danuta Engineering Center, our latest research wonder, and just continuing to proceed forward. Now, there's a lot of items that I've changed. I don't have a lot of the suggestions from my advisors popping up over here anymore. I've just turned those off. I think we're well past the point that they even matter. I'm automating some items. One is that we captured a whole bunch of construction ships. And they're off doing their own things. And at first that was annoying me. We're building a bunch of extra mining stations. And then I realized it doesn't really matter at this point in the game. So I decided, you know what? Let's just automate all of our construction ships and not even worry about it. Because they're going out building mining bases. Our freighters are doing pretty well. I don't need to super optimize that. Really at this point... I'm not even sure we're going to need to have another war. I think just perhaps continuing to expand, we've got Ramses Kalu, we've got some other colony ships out. With the number of races we have, the number of different types of planets that we can colonize, we can continue to push out. You can see the ones over here that we could eventually potentially get if we ran out that way. And yes, the other empires are going to continue to expand. But I might very well, probably can, be able to eventually win this just by pushing out and pushing out and pushing out. So really the only thing that's keeping me going at this point, obviously we want to win properly. I mean, we aren't at 80% yet. We're at 68%. We primarily need more territory. But also I want to see the continuing advance of technology and get as much into that as possible. I should note that there is, if you're not playing on just a standard game, if you're doing a custom game, you can add it in, or if you are in one of the later time frames within the Distant Worlds universe options of the time scale, then there is a mid to late game galactic crisis, extra galactic invasion that can happen. But that's not present in our standard Age of Shadows setup here. 
So there is really not a great deal to concern us. And anybody that would pick a fight with us, we could just swat them aside easily. If we look at our power here, it was less than 40,000 military strength before I did the retrofitting. That's now all in place, almost up at 54,000. And if I wanted to build a ton more ships, I could, because we are pushing, you can see the cash flow here, almost 800,000 there. And again, that's just going to keep right on going up. There is one other war that started recently. And that's the Kaidania over here. These are the Securans. They're roughly tied for number two in the galaxy right now with the Kadame Dominion on the other side. And they went to war with the Kludar Hive, Slukans, who they will smash fairly easily. I think they've probably got about a three or four to one advantage. But that's not even near enough to us that we could even reasonably reach that fight. So we don't even care about that. They can just do whatever it is they wish. And we are going to continue trying to expand as best we can. I should note that we did get another leader. Profarian is already gone and out of the picture. And our new leader is Kal Glapir, who basically sucks. Uh, measured, okay, but is corrupt and it's got some negative bonuses here. Traits and skills are not the best. But do we even care? Not particularly. This is the volcanic moon of Engedi. It's the first one that we had the Gazurians colonize. Mentioned this one before over in Delanixa, and we continue to expand, although we're going to need to slow down a bit now because our freighters are actually getting a little bit overtaxed. So we'll just continue to let them catch up and then proceed with that later. But nothing else really of import has happened other than, of course, the continual progress on research. I should mention that with the war weariness, it actually worked very weird after the war was over. It stayed exactly where it was for a few months, and then it all went away at once, which I think is strange. But regardless of all that, we've now for a while had our taxes back up where we're going to want them, still working on the regional capital, and we are pushing ever higher. Time marches on, and here's how the galaxy looks near the end of 2134. We've gotten a couple more colonies, but we are waiting for the freighters to get caught up and that has not quite happened yet, although they've made some progress. Our Gnari colony ship finally limped its way out here, and there's a pretty decent ice moon, not huge size, but pretty good quality. And that sort of gives us a foothold in this whole area. And then we already had the one colony ship on the way here. And then this is Liana, the Smirin moon in there, surprisingly defected to our side. That can happen if you have a lot of territorial or influence pressure right by where their territory is, particularly if you push back their territory enough where it's actually inside of your range, but that is not what happened here. This was still a ways away, so I'm a little bit surprised. Nonetheless, it was part of the Gurkhi Empire, and now it isn't anymore. We have 1.6 billion Naxilians and a few Tekans on there who have joined our cause. And interestingly enough, the Gurkis are at war, recently declared, with the Patrim Corporation. So we'll have to wait and see how all of that transpires, but it'll be a more even war, I think, now, at least a bit, that one of their colonies has defected to the Akuro. Then we have also some research that is going on, and our overall ability continues to scale up, almost up to a million even on the high tech. On the weapon side, we're just filling in this fifth tier here. All of the ones that aren't of particularly huge importance, but that we want to be able to move forward to the next tier. So that will take some time. Energy and construction. Mega scale construction will boost us up again to 800 chip size. I'm probably not even going to retrofit when that happens, though. I want to get a bunch of these other items in that we're going to have. For example, we haven't had more engines in a long time. We're still using the protons, but we're ready to now make this jump up to the advanced engines, which is known as the Vortex. And then we're gonna get the next set of hyperdrives a little faster than we're going now, but the big difference is going to be the jump time is shorter. And then we've got advanced shields, both stronger and better recharge than anything we currently have. And then we'll also finally make the jump to hydrogen fuel with the hyperfusion reactor. So there's a lot of these which are basically just the baseline or entry level techs for what you might call the end game. This whole tier here is obviously got a ton in it, but after that you can see there isn't much. So we're really getting close 
at moving into some very powerful abilities. And then on the high tech and industrial side, this is where we were before. We're just filling in again all of the gaps here. I did want to say on the stealth, I don't really get it. I think stealth comes along too late in the game to really be useful. The Spy Academy, that's not a complaint there. But on the Stealth Cloak itself, by the time you get here, I mean, you need all three of these just to get it. So it's kind of hard to rush for it. By the time you get stealth, I would think the Pirate Wars are over and you're just fighting with other empires. Maybe you want to stealth like a monitoring station here or there, but what's the real use in using it widespread when you're into this type of, you know, larger scale conflict? I'm just not really sure what the use of that is, personally. In any case, we're just going to fill in all of the rest of the items of this tier, and then we're going to get our colonization, which the key point about these upgrades is not just getting the ocean colonization, but it also doubles the growth rate of the previous one. So we'll double our marshy swamp, then when we get continental and desert, then the desert will double the growth of continentals, and so on. So all of that will help our population grow even more, and I think it's time to just grab those, although we can actually already colonize these with the Akdarians, and I think the Mortalans at least can land here, and also the Tekans, so there is definitely the capability of colonizing those with what we already have if we want to do so. So I think most likely we are going to be looking at the end of this next episode, or the one after. We are currently at 72%. Our economy is already larger than we can benefit from in our score, so it's just mostly territory, particularly continental colonies, and just continuing to grow our population is what we're going to need to put us over the hump and hit that 80% mark for victory. So unless I miss my guess, there may not be a whole lot more of action. It may just be continuing to grow and grow to get to that point. Of course, we could just do a quick war and achieve it, but I want to do it the natural expanding way. I'm going to pick a fight that we don't have to. That process will continue when exploring Distant World Returns. Thanks for watching.